Yo, yo, my name is Big Lou, and you are now listening to Go Produce. We're the show that explores how music industry professionals turn their passions into profit. If you want to hear the perspective of an up-and-coming artist from a rural part of the world, then this episode is for you. Thank you, Factor, for funding part of this initiative. Today's theme is, how has being in a relatively remote part of the world affected your career so far? Today's guest is Tiernan Heffron, the 21-year-old singer-songwriter from County Antrim, Northern Ireland, first began singing at the age of four years old. By age eight, he was learning to play the guitar. By age 12, he had began writing his own original music with unique vocal tonality, an innate feel for melody, and the ability to write relatable hit lyrics. Tiernan Heffron is sure to make a name for himself. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Tiernan Heffron. Yeah, boy! Thank you, Tiernan, for being here. I want you to know that we do appreciate your time, so let's make the most of this and go produce. The first segment of the show is called The Basic. All right, Tiernan, so we like to start off this show with the segment called The Basics, and what we're going to do ultimately is try and decipher where you're coming from, where you want to go, and so that we can all move forward together on that same path. That makes sense? 100%. Yeah, sounds good. All right, all right. So what's your first musical memory? My first musical memory would have been when I was about four or five years old. I used to visit my granda, uh, my granda Sami, and when your granda has visitors, then I always remember he would have made me stand up in the middle of the mat in the living room and sing a song. Uh, so that's my first musical memory. And then that kind of led on to running around the house singing, like, I don't know if you maybe heard of a band called McFly or Bust It songs. Nope. They were, big <laughs> band, they were big bands in the UK, still are. Um, they were really coming up when I was four or five years old. So, and Westlife was too, you know, good Irish, good Irish boy band songs. That's my earliest memory of singing. Are they still inspirations to you today? Oh yeah, very much so. Um, very much so. It, it's funny, like you know, looking back, I can see now how much that actually influenced my sound and my songwriting and just the style of music I still listen to today. It's also changed a lot, but um, yeah, definitely. You're still quite young. You're 21 years old, but you have yep. quite the experience already, quite the background within the industry. I'm just curious to know what is the first lesson that the industry has taught you. The first lesson that the industry taught me is really just to believe in yourself. Um, you know, just just have a have a big dream. You know, shoot for the stars and hopefully you land on the moon. That's what I say. You know, just go for it and just don't let anything hold you back from believing that you can 100%. be the best that you can be. One hundred percent. Was there was there a specific example of a time where you almost hesitated in yourself and you're just like, ah, I just got to do it, despite my curling stomach pains. <laughs> Well, do you know what? Um, I've, I just, it's as if I've been born to do it. It, it sounds really like corny and that, you know, that's what you would hear on, you know, I was born to do this, you know, but like, I really, I feel like I really was like, I, there's never been a moment where I can remember not wanting to do it or not being able to sing or not having it in me that want for something, you know, and that is performance. So I've always kind of just had this one way vision of, creating music that I love and hopefully a lot of other people are going to love it as much as I enjoy singing it and writing it. Yeah. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? Explain to me what that word means a little bit. (laughs) Imposter syndrome where you're almost in a position where you don't necessarily think you may belong. It's almost a, a little flash of insecurity, if you will, questioning, do I really deserve to be here amongst these other fantastic people? Yeah, well, um, sometimes uh, when I'm on the stage and I'm performing, I feel like I completely belong there. And I, I feel like I always say, like, when I put the guitar on me and I'm performing, I feel like I can breathe, you know, like, like have that outlet. And then when I come off the stage, um, the, um, just, I don't know, just kind of, just kind of be when I was about 18, 19. Because all I wanted to be was up on the stage performing. But now that I'm getting a little bit older and a little bit wiser, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting the hang of both, which is great. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because you're still, you're still very much into the like the the 
meat of your career. What firsts are you currently pursuing? What first? <clears throat> Sorry. First, perhaps something that you haven't necessarily accomplished quite yet. Oh yeah, there's there's quite a few, Louis. Uh, one of them that just comes straight into my mind is going to Nashville. I really want to go to Nashville. Um, I just want to be there and see the city. Um, I want to. I want, I've, I've, there's a couple of different goals. I mean, I, I haven't hit the one million mark at all on my streaming songs on, on Spotify or. Um, I'm working my way up, you know, last year I had 10,000 overall listens, streams, and uh, this year I've got 240,000, and that was all inside the space of six months as well, since my first release of my single with uh, No Strangers Ecstasy, so uh, I would love to just, I think it's a big, uh, what's that word called, you know, uh, landmark, lam- landmark, yeah, yeah, yeah just hit, hitting the one million, shall it be streams or views in a video or something like that. So yeah, and you know, hop on a hop on a song with like a big up a big artist, you know, like Brett Young, Luke Combs, James Arthur. <laughs> yeah, a couple of a couple uh, of firsts. I, yeah, yeah, I'm performing in the arena. I've never performed in an arena, and that's a huge one. That's a huge Oof. one. That, that would be a huge one as well. I would I would love it. You mentioned one of your goals being hitting one million streams. Do you have a laid out strategy in terms of getting to this goal, or is it almost just a free for all? What's your what's your technique behind this? That's a great question. I like that one. Uh, you know, I released music there for five years and throughout the five years, I never got over, I'd say, 600 monthly listeners on Spotify. And when I did, it dropped down and it was a bit disheartening. And I always wondered why, you know, why is this not going where I, where I want it to go? And then from really learning about how Spotify works, you know, the algorithms, taking that time out of your day to spend a, a couple of hours watching, you know, a lot of YouTube videos about how the alg- algorithm works, how to go on playlists. Um, and I think I, I, a big thing I've learned is having one-to-ones with people, you know, going on Instagram, hitting up other artists, hitting up people who like your post, who, who like your, your song and just saying, hey, you know, if you want to check out my songs, um, hope you like them. Then they put it into a playlist and their friend maybe sees it. Their friend puts it into a playlist and it kind of has a snowball effect, you know? So that's something that I've been tapping into quite a lot. And since I've been doing that, I've seen a huge increase in just my overall organic um, streams and, and uh, yeah. So is it more on social media, on, on Instagram, for example, is it a more direct messaging approach that you take? Yeah, well, um, I mean, you would know that. <laughs> so I bet. I that's, what I, that's what really caught me. Off I guard. So going. how about we how about we take that approach? Say you're trying to Let's reach out to me, yeah. Yep. So basically what I do is um like t- just to be completely honest and just saying that how it is, I always thought that when I was becoming about eighteen, I thought, you know, you get that one hit song, it takes off your Instagram takes off, you know, your, all your songs get big streams and, and stuff like that. But I really kind of learned that, like, I watched a lot of Gary V videos and there's a, there's an, um, a music, uh, very important, a very good music guy from uh, the UK called, his name Damien Keys, you know. Ooh, I'm uh, a huge fan of Damien Keys. Uh, are you? Yeah. Well, I didn't, look, listen, I am too. And I hope if he's watching, big shout out to Damien <laughs> Keys. But I am sorry that I introduced you as a really good music guy, right? Because he's, he's, I don't even know how to describe him. He's just a great, He's a great person. Phenomenal and, person, uh, yeah. I actually went to his college that he set up. He set up a, a music college called BIM over yep. in England, and I went and studied songwriting there, which is really cool. Oof. But yeah, like you know, I watched a lot of his videos, and it really changed a lot of things for me, and it changed my mindset, and it realized, you know, you just got to go do it yourself. Uh, like, you got to get one-to-ones for this time. You know what I mean? While I haven't had that big break or haven't took off yet, you know, it while I can do it, have them one-to-ones and build relationships with people. And then, you know, if you do become like Lewis Capaldi level or James Arthur level, you know, then it's maybe not going to be as simple as that. You maybe not have to do that every single day and spend, you know, four, three hours, three or four hours on, on Instagram. But at this time, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Four or three. It, and <laughs> I want to, exactly, I wanted to reiterate on that three to four hours a day on Instagram. And it's not just like, you know, scrolling through, oh, I like cats and kittens and coffee mugs and whatnot. You're actively looking through comments, those threads, commenting on those comments, 
reaching yeah. out, sending video posts, all of this kind of stuff. And it's 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 an active process where you're genuinely working on this app as opposed to just leisurely spending three to four hours on the apps, which a lot of people will do. Yeah, well, you know, I do find myself on like a guitar, um, a guitar Instagram page and it's like looking at telecasters for about half an hour, you know, I would love to get this one. Telecasters are quite nice though. <laughs> or that one. Still relatable, still love, relatable. You know, <laughs> I, I do. I find myself on there, but yes, it's it's uh, it's good. That's awesome. Beautiful, Tiernan. That's the end of the basics. We'll be moving nicely into our next segment. You ready? Our next segment is called, What's Your Take? What's Your Take? Okay. Yeah, so in What's Your Take, I'm going to be throwing a couple semi-ridiculous perspectives your way, and I essentially want your opinion on the matter. Simple okay. as that. Uh, uh okay. <laughs> so much experience, so much wisdom. I know. Becoming a hit on YouTube was a simple process. What's your take? What's well, my take? So it's not like one word answers or anything here, like yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's my take? Um I think it's the same as like Spotify a little bit. I think you can only kind of do so much, but you kind of have to like work work with it instead of work. To it, you know, we got to work with the algorithm. You got to post regular, regularly, regular, regular. You got to post <laughs> regularly. Um, you got to have good, good, good content if you really want to, you know, break free on on YouTube. Yeah, I have um, here your cover of Galway Girl so by yeah, Steve it's, Earle. It's, uh, Can you talk about that one? Your cover of Galway you know Girl what? by Steve Earle. How it went? You know so what? that's yeah, that's so funny because um, I was actually watching that today with one of my friends. Uh, on YouTube, it was quite funny. We came across it, but yeah, so basic, right? I was quite funny actually. I was twelve years old, twelve, and my mum and my dad wouldn't let me upload any videos to YouTube until I was thirteen. Don't know why. Something to do with it. Probably sounds better being thirteen and younger than that putting on YouTube. Uh, I don't mean better as in it sounds better. I just mean it sounds better from a parent's point of view, mm. right? You know, yeah, you're yeah. not going to do that until you're a teenager. So I right. was like, right, okay, no problem. So I thought, hmm. So I took an ocean one night and it was like, I remember it was like one really nice evening and I got my, I got my music <clears> stand. I got my phone, like my like iPhone fourth generation or something at the time. And I went out to like a field outside my house. And like I stood in the middle of the field and I put my music stand up and my guitar with me in that. And I just, I, I started like just recording covers. Um, so I did, I, I did like, I think I did Goy Girl, I did Johnny Cash Stand By Me, you know, all these kind of songs that I knew at the time and I still do. And uh, yeah, I mean, I put that on YouTube and now it's got over like 30,000 views. Um, you know, it was, it's quite funny, you know, it definitely got me. Got my name around school at that time. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was a good thing and a bad thing. I bet. <laughs> did you we are today? <laughs> did you do anything in particular to get the cover heard? Um, I think well, back in back back in the day, listen to me. I'm as if I'm sounding so old, but like back then, about that was what nine years, ten years, ten years ago now, nine years yeah. ago. Uh, so I don't know if you maybe remember, but about ten years ago, YouTube had a feature. And it was a little bit like Messenger. So like you had an inbox and a sent box and stuff <laughs> like that. And um, I remember being that at that. I remember putting up that cover, right? This is so funny. Justin Bieber is blown up at the time. Like huge blown up at the time. And his baby music video, okay? Oh my goodness. It's all coming out now. <laughs> baby had like millions of views every like hour. It was just going up and up and up. So I used to go on to like the comment section and be like, everybody, like follow me like subscribe i am a singer songwriter from ireland and i am 12 years old and i just done a cover of galway girl which i'm sure they never heard of galway girl but you actually <laughs> funny stands. enough got you got the odd people like <clears throat> commenting back be like cool cover kid or like stuff like that and then yeah i think i've always just been a wee bit of a hustler and grafter when it comes to kind of like that kind of stuff as i said about my instagram and all so it's really funny actually thinking back to that age i was doing the same thing but yeah it was like doing that and stuff it was quite funny so even from the beginning you have to like literally direct message people the networking yeah. game is, is so key at any age i really 
I really hope I am not doing that all my life. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> once you're starting, yeah. That. Yeah, no, but um, no, I do. I always enjoy just human contact. Like, I mean, I just love reaching out to people, meeting new people, building relationships, hearing their music as much as mine. You know, like I love to find new music. I love to see <clears throat> other upcoming artists. Yeah. Um, doing their thing. So when people mess me about their music or something like that, I always just if I can at least just like the message at least I just don't want to ever want to leave it open and red and just never get it back to them you know because for me it doesn't take long I might not remember their name or remember it but for them they're always going to you know what I mean remember that of time they messaged here and then he didn't reply or he didn't reply. of course so I just I quite I just try to have like uh be mindful of people reaching out to me and stuff 100% also do you uh did you find perhaps an example of this is when you were starting, you wanted to post earlier on YouTube, but your parents said not until you were a teenager. Did you find that you had any other issues being so young starting up? Yeah, well, it's funny. I just forgot the mention there. So like I put it up on YouTube and that and it was doing well. But the really the weird thing was I couldn't tell my mom and dad, like, oh my God, my video's got 5,000 views now because then they'd know that I put a video up on YouTube. But then my mom and dad started getting messages from like their friends. Like, oh, I just seen Wee Tiernan's video and it was so good. And then like my mom and dad's like, what? Tiernan, did you put a video on YouTube? I'm like, no, I didn't. I swear I didn't. And they've like already watched it and seen it like, well we've seen it and it's pretty good <laughs> and they were like all right you can just instead of waiting here for 18th birthday you just crack on yeah and have a look back since but did you find ever um, in I like don't think that answered your question but what was your question again <laughs> it was a fun fun story but in terms of professionals being being seen as someone who is serious in the industry are there struggles that you had because there are other kids out there 12 13 14 maybe even younger that are trying to get some <clears> experience <throat> but they're just struggling with that Yes, uh, I like. I um, I can just say that uh, the, you know, just kind of like when you're like, listen, when I put that cover up on YouTube and I went to school, uh, there was a there was a thing up like I would have always sang for anyone, right? It's like I would have sang out in the schoolyard. I remember like all the older fifth year girls, right, would have came up to me and like, can you sing a song? I'm like, oh, yeah, well, do you want me to sing? I'll sing a Justin Bieber song. All right, baby, oh, with you, with you. Like, I'd be singing like Chris Brown's cover, uh, Chris Brown's with you, but, you know, the Justin Bieber version. It's like, I would have started singing that in like the playground, right? And then like all the, all the girls with the crowd around and like took out their phones and like started recording me but here's me thinking this is class like oh my goodness getting all their numbers and all that like going to tell me it's like oh I got her number but then like all, all the older people in the school they would be like calling me like <laughs> <laughs> getting all this attention <laughs> that is a terrible sound to have in my headphones I didn't like that. Uh, just messing with my buttons here a little bit. It's really threw me off. But basically, right? So like, they, like as I was walking around in school, then you got a lot of people like going, yo, we Justin Bieber, sing me a song. You know, like calling me this and that for singing. And then I used to get, and then I would have gotten like an argument with them or fighting, like, you know, stand up for stuff like, don't call me that or, you know. And, uh, but you know, I'm kind of going on a bit here, but what I just want to say is that like I know what it's like when you're 11 12 and you're singing in school and, and it, you're different right you know you're going to stand out and not everyone's gonna gonna like that um but who 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 cares you know what I mean if you enjoy doing it and you love doing it you do it um because why not <laughs> is that well that's good enough reason for me why not why not try it you know at least. I mean? that's what you love to do and just just go on and do it, you know what I mean? So Are yeah. you still are you still taking requests? If I know it, I let's hear something now. Oh I don't hear something. Ooh, <laughs> I don't see why not. Okay. All right. Well, you remember I said I used to do like Justin Bieber with you by Chris Brown. Actually, you know what? Can I get my guitar? Yep. Please do, please do. Oh my goodness. Yay. Okay. Is, about some Celine Dion. Do you know nice some Celine time. Dion? Right, you know what? This is gonna be so fun. Um go for it. Right. Give me give me requests and I'll see how many I can do, but I'll only do wee bits off the songs, okay? Let's do something by Celine Dion. 
Okay, the only bit I know, it could only be a couple of lines, right? Yeah. So, like, every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. Na, 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 <laughs> go on, talk, go back. <laughs> All right, okay, right. Awesome. give me an R one, give me an R one, give me an R one. <laughs> Whoa. Right, give me an R one. Something by Ed Sheeran. Something by what? Ed Sheeran. I'm gonna take off the pieces and build Lego hearts. Things go wrong, we can knock it down. Guitar slightly edging. Go, go for it. Give me an R one. This is fun. How about um, you were talking about? You were talking about what's the name of the Scottish talking guy? About Scottish guy. Oh, Lewis Capaldi. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. I feel by the wayside, like everyone else. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, but I'm just kidding myself. Every moment, I start a place. But now that you're gone on the hill, there was that I need to say. You hurt on the this surface, like troubled water on cold. Time can heal, but this won't. So... Because my parents are sleeping, <laughs> I'm not going to sing the chorus like I normally would. Because I will get in so much trouble if they hear me. Oh, that was amazing! That's awesome. This guy is out here. You heard him oh here my God, first. I'm on fire. <laughs> They'll hear it. You know what? You don't need to worry about them hearing me. It's the fire alarms going off in the house. Been like. <laughs> The fire alarm. Ba -ba 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 -ba. That's jokes. <laughs> it's only me playing songs. Okay, one last one by by one of your one of okay, your fellow Irishmen by Hosier. Ooh. Hosier, okay. <clears throat> My love has got humor. She's girl at a funeral. Does everybody's disapproval? Should it worship her sooner? And if the heavens ever did speak, she's my last true mouthpiece. Every sun is getting more bleak, fresh poison each week. We were born sick, you heard him say it. Mammy, to be well. Amen. 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 <laughs> goes in goes in that's awesome uh, that's awesome thank you for doing very, that very good very very thank good thank you was it is this grumpy sound man saying that's very good whoa yeah. must be good. Let's, uh, yes. let's give the boy some love oh my god that's awesome that is a sound I haven't heard in a while. People in the one room clapping and having a good time. Whoa, can't <laughs> wait for that again. For real, Do you remember for, that? Real. for real. Tiernan, I got one more question before this segment um, or for, for what's your take. What's your take? I wanted to say formalized or conventional education is beneficial to all artists, but mainly I want to talk about BIM and your experience there because you mentioned that. So if you could just talk about that for maybe like two minutes and then we can jump on to the next one. Yeah. Okay, so going to BIM, right? It was a great experience and I did learn a lot from it. Um, and I think, the, listen, the, the only thing I can really say and the best thing that sums everything up, right, is it's like anything. You get what you put in. No, you put in what you get. No, yeah, you get what you put in. <laughs> you get what you put in. Do you know what I mean? It's like you have like... You, you know, you get what you put in. If you go there and you network and you go to class or you meet different people on nights out, you go to gigs, you're going to network and you're going to meet people and build relationships. If you don't, 
if you go there and they don't really bother doing that or going out the gigs or or writing on when when you get all the free time then i'm not saying that you're not going to do great things who knows you might but that's just my experience you kind of you get what you put in really yeah if that makes sense does that answer the whole thing yeah i, I can you tell us a little bit more about what bim is like what it stands for yeah. for example yeah, so BIM is British Irish Modern Music, or Institute of Modern Music. Yeah, uh, it originally was uh, like you know, bright. It says about right, British Irish Modern Music of Brighton. I don't know, it's Institute of Brighton or whatever, because it started in Brighton. But Damien Keys actually he founded the college and he put it together. Now it's like the biggest, one of the biggest music colleges in, in the world. I was lucky enough to get into it when I was nineteen. Um, it's where James Bay and George Ezra are actually past pupils. They went there. I think James Bay actually, one of his, he got discovered playing at his, you know, at one of Bim's, uh, you know, nights that they have music, uh, you know, like or in the semester, you know, for the college students and that. Oh, cool. He got found playing there by an A&R. I think, I'm pretty sure I'm not quote me on that. But yeah, um, sorry, I'm going a little bit off topic. But I went to the Manchester one, um, for a year and I studied songwriting and uh, then I came home after a year and um, I fell in with the label I'm on now and it was just the right path for me really Um, I can do everything that I could over there but now I'm doing it at home um, right. so I thank goodness that I did only do the year because if I had stayed there the coronavirus came, so I just got out in time. So, oh, interesting. God, I didn't have to do the next two years. Right, right, you right. Know, it really was a blessing. Interesting how it works out that way. Thank you for yeah. sharing that story with us. We've got our next segment. Our next segment is called Clear the Air. <laughs> That's All right, so in Clear the Air, we're going to talk or toss over a couple of. Uh, I guess just talking points, we want to try and really hash out the different learning points for our listeners. That makes sense? Okay, makes sense, yep. Cool. Yep. So we start off this segment with our featured fan question. Let me just pull that up for you. Hey, what's up, Tiernan Herman? I hope I pronounced that well. We have a couple questions for you. Who has been your biggest influence so far? Is there someone who had already done it that makes you want to say, I want to be like them? And also for upcoming artists, what would your biggest advice, biggest advice be? <laughs> Thank you, man. You have a wonderful day. Oh, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I love that. That's wow. Jokes. Did you did you hear the questions? I can repeat them for you if you like. Yeah, I heard them. Okay. I heard them. Okay. Yep, I've got a good answer for this one. Got a very good answer for this one. That's um, right. Okay, so the first one, the first one was, have I ever came across someone who didn't maybe do it, and I want to fill it. Do you know what I mean? Who maybe had that chance but never fulfilled it? Well, uh, right beside Say me, <laughs> right, bes right beside me here. Okay, is something very special to me that I got for my 18th birthday from my godmother, my Aunt Marie. She put it together. So I remember my earliest memory was singing on my granda's mat on his living room floor. Uh, my granda, my granda Sammy was a performer. He wrote and he sang poems and he performed with my, my great aunt Sheena, who was his sister. When they were younger, so they were my age and they were traveling all around Ireland and they were doing different shows and talent shows, this and that. And, um, and, and, and as you can see here, like, right, so these are letters actually from record labels from 1962, 1959, 1972, literally saying like, hey, you know, <clears throat> dear Sheena, Sammy, I, I heard you came across you singing at a, in a concert hall we would love it if you could come to the studio and do a recording and we could send it away to our top radio stations um dublin you know they they you know user from canada they actually got the chance to go to canada to pursue music uh, and t they could have been really really huge um but they were that much of homebirds that they wanted to they never took it they wow. were happy enough staying at home. I mean, my my dad had 
five brothers and sisters. So she was like looking after them. They literally lived a literally, I mean, a stone for away from my granny's house. So she was um, they just stayed. They never, they never took it. They they had they were just happy. Do you know what I mean? And to me, that means so much more than going off and, and doing a huge thing. They were just happy and content doing what they were doing and always having that music. So my mom always says that like. I'm the exact. I'm like them. Only I. I want a. I want to go all the way. Like I want to do what they never did, and got done. That's um, awesome. So yeah, and you know, I've actually got this here. It's um something that probably my most thing, my most prized possession. It's like a wee. It's a thing out of my wallet. Um, I keep a picture of my granda, my granda Sammy. So my my confirmation name is Samuel. So after my granda. So I actually I I take this with me any. Like I don't want to loss it, right? So like I try not to take it with me like all the time. But like my first day at college, if I've got a really big gig, if I've got a job interview, if I'm doing something important, I bring it and always keep it in my pocket. So I never want to lose it. So yeah, I just um that's that's the answer I have. That's awesome. For that. That's a- and, and I, I could give you a win of more examples would be her all day. Well, no, I do appreciate that, but it's 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 something cool to have the sentimental tie to the inspiration as well, because like this was directly a person that you've seen day in and day yeah. out, um, and a lot of the time you'll have parasocial interactions or or relationships with celebrities that you see online or in books, and you're like, that's my mentor, that's my whatever the case well, may that, be. But this is well, cool that's too. it. Yeah, that's it. You know, and in my heart, they made it. Um, they were they didn't want money, they didn't want fame, they didn't want recognition. They were just happy. Do you know what I mean? And you could have that all and not be happy. So it's just amazing to um to have have it and now I want to deliver it with the world. The world. So, so, so sentimental. Sentimental. Oh my goodness. Get out of here with this. Okay. Yeah. So as we're nearing the end, I'm hoping to get some highlights on certain uh 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 well, I suppose highlights of your career. I can name out a few specifically or we can Start with whichever stands out the most to you. Which would you prefer? You just broke up a little bit there, but you said about highlights of my Your career, career yeah. So we're hoping to go into a couple of highlights yeah. of your career. Um, how, how about we start here with this one? Your TV debut you. on UTV live with Pamela Ballantine in March 2017. Yep. Can you tell us about that experience? Yeah, I, I can tell you how to say her name properly. Ballantine, <laughs> like is it? Okay, Ballantine, yeah. Shots yeah, fired! Yeah. Shots fired! I was, as I was... Yeah, there it is. As I was, I was, as I was saying that, I was thinking I sound like a cheeky <laughs> <laughs> so Basically, um, okay, so she's like a very well-known, famous TV presenter in Northern Ireland, right? And yo, you know, you want to be on her show. It's it's a little bit like the right? So it's like the Ellen show or the Late Late Show, but it's like on a very smaller level, you know, right. because it's, it's not that. Yeah, but, yeah. um... You always want to be on that as an artist, singer, or whatever. And I was doing a gig in Belfast, um, in a place called St George's Market. I got I got in there because I was busking. I was actually, you know, busking after class. And anyway, I was playing there, and she came in, and I said, "I said I need to get her a CD." Like so I had a, I released my first EP at the time. I was seventeen, but overthinking. I like went up to her and I gave her my CD. I says, "You know, my name's Tiernan. And I'm seventeen. I'm from here. My own songs." She's like, thank you very much. I'm, I'm actually going to drive home, so I'm going to get a listen to that on my drive home. And I thought, great, brilliant. But do you know what I mean? There's been that many times where you give your CD to someone and you never hear anything back. And I just kind of never thought much of it. And then a couple of weeks later, I got an email. And because my email's on the back of the CD, and it was like, you know, hey, here, and I listened to your, uh, your CD on the way home. I listened to it free a couple of times. We'd love to get you on the show. And it just happened from that, which was great so me and my band at the time went up and uh yeah we did, did the we did the show when it was, when it was great that's super awesome that's super awesome. As well. what about traveling to new york what was that like what did you do that, that for? Was, that was an amazing experience so me and my team tt <laughs> music uh we went out to uh to new york um it was a few years ago now and so it was my independent label at the time uh, so we went out there and we shot a music video to uh, a song at the time called Emily, which people still ask me to sing it, which is which is really cool. Um, and we pretty did, pretty much did it DIY, you know. Me and a couple of friends went out. We had a cameras 
and we had a uh, back and track, well, the song and speaker, and we went around different parts of New York shooting the video and we put it all together. And then while I was there, um, Tony Rogers, who was with me, uh, he was friends with Hollywood Hamilton. So Sean Hollywood Hamilton, he's a very, he's actually in like New York's Radio Hall of Fame. And he invited us up to the studio and we went on, did an interview. We ended up getting an interview on live up to New York in front of on air to millions of people across the city. And the day before, actually, like Miley Cyrus was in that same seat I was sitting on and Justin <laughs> yeah. Bieber was in that the next week. And like, <clears throat> it was just really cool. So that was just a really surreal experience. And, you know, I, I hope, uh, you know, once I get all this new material together and that, like to give it I, I mean I still keep in contact with Hollywood and um it's really cool actually because on his Instagram Benny I pronounced this wrong Benny Blanco Benny Blanco yeah Benny, Blank, Benny Blanco and Justin Bieber give him a shout out it was like hey guys go tune out go tune in the shot to Hollywood Hamilton you know his radio show which is so cool and uh yeah basically oh my god I'm sounding like such a fanboy here if I even <laughs> want to try it again but no um basically yeah so um he said you know go away work on your own music get solid good material and you know show me it and come back to me and we see what we can do so i'm in the process of that at the minute just every day working away getting one percent better getting all material together and hopefully you know be able to give them something nice and soon a couple of years that's yeah. awesome what about the biggest yeah. festival experience you've had to date Biggest festival experience was i performed at a festival over in jersey it was called the weekender and uh, Rita Ora was headlining that Rita at Ora? the time. Oof. Rita Ora. Awesome. Oof. Rita Ora, Rag and Bone Man, Becky Hill. Do you, are you, do you heard of Becky Hill over there? I'm not familiar with her personally, but I'm sure there okay. are people who have heard of her. Becky Hill. Um, yeah, so all of them bigger artists. And it was my biggest gig I've ever done. Best gig I've ever done. And uh, yeah, got to meet Rita Ora and that after. My, her tent was literally just like outside mine and so I went over and I chatted to her I got a photo a great photo with her a selfie she held my phone <laughs> <laughs> I was she held my phone she wouldn't That's be awesome. allowed to do that now these days you know can't even go close to people but um yeah I got a chat to her she asked me how my gig went and it's a really funny story right so I I seen her stand outside her tent and I ran into my tent and I had one cd left again doing the thing with the CD and I put it in my back pocket right so I don't want to just walk over with the CD yet. and I said excuse me Rita can I photo and she was really lovely about it she asked me how my gig went she asked me where I'm from how's my music going which was super cool and I was literally standing there having a just literally like me and you're talking I mean like just chatting to her right or like the voice that you always hear on the, all the radios and the show and it's just like I just felt so comfortable. Do you know what I mean? It's just normal woman, like yeah. just having a chat here, like another musician. And um, so it kind of came to the point, you know, at the end, you kind of get the vibe. Conversation's going to be over soon, right? You're not going to stand around talking all the time uh, for, a, for a long time about it. What else can you talk about? So yeah. I said, I says to her, thanks so much. And she's like, yeah, see you later. Whatever. I goes, oh, by the way, here's my CD. <laughs> and she goes, oh, is this you? And I was like, yeah, 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 it's me. Um, she's like, is this your last one? And I was like, yep, it's my last one. She's like, well, I, I think you better hold on to it. And then I went, nah, I think you better you better keep it. <laughs> and she, I just remember her look, like, looking kind of confused, like, uh, okay, thank, thank you, thank you very much. I'm like, yeah, no problem. And then, what do you think she did with that album after you left? I, I don't know. I told her my email was in the back of it, you know, <laughs> thinking that maybe she would like it, and. Or, or team would reach out, reach out to me or something like that but you know when are you ever going to get that chance and hopefully you know get the chance again and say well Rita did you enjoy that CD <laughs> no it would be so funny if like whenever you, I did you know do get like it would be great to have a bit of success right say you're on like you know like James Gordon's Late Late Show right or whatever and I was like so you met Rita Ora one time tell us a story about that and then I told him about like oh you yeah, know I gave her the CD and then you know, she asked, he asked, like, exactly what you just asked there now. Like, so what do you think she did with that CD? And I'm like, I don't know. She might have left it in her tent, you know. Or, and the next thing, like, Great Aura comes out. Like, she's the other guest. She's like, well, I've got it right here. 
It's possible. You never know. You never know. Yeah, very funny. Tiernan, this has been super, super awesome. I want to say thank you so much for this. But before we do wrap up, do you have any final words that you want to share with our audience? I just want to say, well, first of all, I just want to say thanks so much for having me on this on the show. Uh, it's my first ever proper podcast I've ever done. So thank you for that. It's awesome. Thank it's you for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure just diving out with you and having great fun. Um, as you know, I am a night owl. It is one o'clock over here, so I don't mind. Um, I just want to say that I'm just working really hard at the minute, uh, writing the best music I possibly can that I love. And I've got, I'm working with some great people. I've got the best team around me. I'm just so content and just happy with, with, with what I'm doing at the minute. And I'm really hoping that I do believe that everything, you know, it's a, it's a, it hasn't been the best year 2020 for everyone in the world, especially for live musicians out there and people in general. And I really do believe that everything's going to come back around and it's going to be bigger than ever. And I, do believe that music is going to be what saves the world. It's going to it's going to be what saves everybody from from everything that's going on. Um. So yeah, I I, I hope that you know in the next five years I want to be. I just say it how it is. Like in the next five years, like I want to I want to be a household name. I want uh, I want to break America. I want to break Canada. I want to break Australia. I want to break Europe. And I just want to get. I know. I just want to get my music out there and, and share the positivity and happiness with a lot of people. And, you know, if they like it, they like it. And if they don't, it's cool. Everyone's open to Exactly, if they're allowed to. Opinion. That's beautiful, beautiful. Tiernan, where can our listeners find you? You can find me singing in my bedroom in Northern Ireland at half one in the morning. <laughs> no, right. Yeah, you can. But no, you can find um, all the good stuff that comes from my bedroom at half one in the morning in Northern Ireland on Spotify. Um, Apple Music, SoundCloud, all the streaming platforms. You can find me on YouTube if you want to look at me <laughs> when I'm singing. Uh, <laughs> and you can find me every, every Google, whatever, you know. Is uh, do you, Are you on social media, Instagram? What's your what's your handle for that? Um, I'm on Instagram. My Instagram is just Tiernan Heffron, just straight up. Straight name. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Awesome. And we'll make sure to include all of that in our show notes as well. On that note, I want to say thank you to our listeners. Without you guys, there would be no show. Obviously, we'd be talking to no one, and that's only so much fun. Shout out to our grumpy sound guy. You, you, you were you were here. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. That's how he really feels. Shout out to our Aww. prevail. Shout out to our prevail media team group. Without the facility and the environment, we could not make this happen. And then, obviously, big shout out to you, Mr. Tiernan Heffern. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. And I just had a, a little thought there, you know, while you were saying that, um, I, cause I, I really like to, I never want to forget about things and I always appreciate everyone on, on the, on the journey up and coming along and help me out. So I would really love to come back on the show sometime. And as I said there, you know, in the next five years, I'd love to do this, that and the other, um, let's get me back on in five years and see, and look back on this show and see what we've, what we've both created and what we've both done. And, uh, we're always going to, you know, we're always going to be doing this and what we're doing no matter what happens. Most we're definitely. Gonna we're going to keep on going. We're always going to be doing what you're doing. So, yeah. I like uh, that. Let's, get, let's, let's, see where, let's work hard and see where we go. I like that. I like that. All right. Thank you, Tiernan. We out. Thank you for listening. If you found any value in this episode and you want to learn more from our content, check out our website at goproduce.ca. If you're on Instagram, check out our handle at go.produce. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. If you're on Spotify, hit download. If you're on Apple Music, leave a review. This will all help us grow our community. I'm Big Lou, and this is Go Produce. Go Produce.